All right, so I'm back with another impromptu video, and uh, I wanted to do kind of like what I did last week. I started this on a whim last week. I, I wanted to talk about the fact that it's okay that there are certain things you can't play on guitar, and just be true to yourself. You know, just try and be you. You don't have to sound like everybody else. Uh, you know, I wanted to create that video as encouragement more than anything, and that video did fairly well. I had a lot of views and responses, you know, a lot of comments and likes and all of that stuff. I got a lot of emails from you. And so that's motivated me to maybe continue doing this and sort of create like a little series. Maybe I'll do this once a week. I'm not sure yet. I'm still feeling that out. But I think so because, it, you know, part of it for me is it's easy. I can just turn on the camera and talk as opposed to having to write lesson material and get guitars out and get everything. You know, there's a lot of work that goes into the lessons I do every week. And so this is a much easier format. And I get a lot of repeat questions, so I thought, hey, this would be cool. I'll turn on the camera, and I can just address stuff this way. So that's what we're going to do. And so this week, I want to talk about the topic of um, how do I write a song uh, every week? I get this question all the time. For years, I've been asked this. Um, and first of all, let me just say, it's not I don't write a song song like the, you know, like a songwriter song. There's no lyrics. There's, it's very simple. There's usually two parts at most. There's like a chorus and a verse kind of thing. And they're usually under a minute, so they're they're kind of like like a sample of, of of a song. But it has to be good enough that people are going to listen to it and like it enough that they're going to either subscribe or they're going to at some point become a premium member. Otherwise, I'm out of business. So there is a pressure on me to make, even though it has to be simple, it has to be good. It has to catch somebody's ear and attention. And so that's the pressure, I, you know, and so I consider myself a songwriter because of that, even though I'm not, you know, in the traditional songwriting world, I'm, I still have to make a living doing this. And so um, the first thing I'll say is the fact that I do this every Friday and I have a schedule is the one has been the best thing for me. For one, I am gotten way better at it. And if you don't believe me, you can watch some of the old videos I did and then you can see, hear, see what I was coming up with then versus now. Uh, but you just get better. You find more efficiencies, and you become a. It becomes more of a a thing, like a, like brushing your teeth or something. You just say, okay, I'm going to do this kind of course. Okay, I'm going to do this kind, and it it comes much easier and faster. So holding yourself to schedule that's a big thing. The other thing I'll say is knowing when to finish. So I have the benefit of and disadvantage. I could say advantage and disadvantage of having a Friday deadline. I put them out on Friday, but that means. That Friday is going to come no matter what. So I have to be kind of finished with the song idea by like Wednesday or Thursday at the latest. A lot of times it's Thursday, but hey. But still, I there is a line in the sand that has to be drawn at some point where I say it's finished. If you don't have that, I, I swear I would I probably wouldn't have written even a tenth of what I've done because I would have just been sort of messing with something, trying to make it perfect. And... Uh, somebody told me once, uh, a guy that I used to work with said, done is better than perfect. And it's just stuck with me. And really, and it's true even of, of music and of the arts. If you look at music like writing a song like a canvas, you've got a blank canvas, you're putting paint on the canvas. At some point, just let the paint dry, set the canvas aside, it's finished, and now grab a new canvas and start something new if you want. But don't keep messing with it. Don't keep meddling with it. You know, you look at John Lennon and all any any Paul McCartney, any of the great songwriters. They they had deadlines too. They had an album to release and and they would finish a song. At some point, they said it's done. And I can't remember. I brought up John Lennon because there was something I heard him say or read, where he I don't remember what song it was. Something on Sar Sgt. Pepper where he just said no, it's done. Like Paul wrote it and then John listened to it and said no, it's, keep it. It's done. And I just it sort of resonated with me because it's decision making. That's a, a good songwriter is a good decision maker. They know that yes, that's enough to call it finished. And so you have to be a decision maker. You have to be decisive. Okay, so that those are a couple of things that I've learned. Um, one of the other things is I keep it very simple. And so uh, that's one of the advantages I have. But it's true of of music in general. If you try and make it complicated, it makes it harder for you. But it also makes it harder for the listener to sit down and try and process something that's complicated. It depends on what you're going for. If it's dream theater or something, well, you know, that's different. But but like, you know, I live in the roots world, like Americana. It's like one, four, five chords for the most part. Throw in a minor chord if you're feeling adventurous. 
But I like that because it just keeps it simple and it makes it fun to play over. In any of these jam sessions I ever go to, and I don't care if it's bluegrass, if it's country, if I go to a blues jam, it's usually always the one, four, five chord thing. It's simple. And so uh, I'm just saying that, that start there, if nothing else. You know, start with something simple. Listen to John Prine. Listen to what he's doing with three chords and like... You know, I mean, it's it's incredible. Now, gr- granted, John Prine is a great lyric writer and stuff, but you, you get my point. So keep it simple. Um, now, uh, w- one of the things that I um, have to do is I write a jam track, and then I play a lead part on top of it. That's one of the formats that I do. The other is to do a standalone composition. But when I'm doing the jam track thing, I have no idea what the lead's going to be. I don't think of it that way. I just I try and write an interesting jam track, and then I think, well, I'll come up with a part. That'll be my challenge for, to myself, to come up with something interesting on top of that. I get that question a lot, and I just wanted to answer it. I do not start with a melody on, in a first and then write chords underneath it. I go the other way. I start with the, 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 the bedding, the, the cording, and then I, I layer on top of that with a, with a lead part. Now, I know that there's different songwriters. A lot of songwriters, I saw Jack, Michael Jackson say, that he sat down with one finger on the piano and he would write a melody and if he could remember it, you know, one finger meaning, you know, no chords, just like a simple melody. And he did We Are the World. He was I think that was what it was in the interview. He was saying that. And that stuck with me because it was it was kind of like like genius advice in a way, you know, just like something very simple. So if you're going for that melody hook thing, that's a good way to think about it. But I'm not doing that so much. I'm teaching more like improvisation stuff. So I start with a jam track, no lead part. I come up with that after the fact. Now, if I'm doing a standalone composition, uh, that's different. That's uh, Then I am thinking more like the Michael Jackson thing. I'm, I'm sitting there trying to come up with a little hook of some kind, some kind of little idea. And it, they're simple. I mean, they're, they're not like complicated. But all I need to do, I keep noodling around until I've, uh, something will jump out at me. And, and then I'll base the whole composition around that hook and that's just sort of been my style and it was really really difficult to do in the beginning and so that's how I do the standalone composition things I start with a little hook or an idea and then I embellish around that so you should try that sometime it's not going to hurt you just grab a guitar and see what you can come up with you can write your own compositions you don't have to be some kind of a musical prodigy you don't have to know about theory per se you just have to have an ear and as long as you've got that you can do this um, so the, those are the, the big things I wanted to share. None of this is revolutionary, by the way. Um, but, but, oh, the other thing. This is a big thing. This, this will be a big, uh, the, a big one. I have an iPhone that I always have with me. And my iPhone is my everything. Well, f- it is for all of us, right? But I use that voice recorder on there, that app, more than anything. You, you would not believe how many. I literally have over a 1,000 voice recordings in there. And it's just... Me sitting down with a, you know, with a guitar on the couch. When I have an idea, I grab that thing because I'm going to forget that idea quickly, and and so I'm always recording myself. I've also got an app on my watch, Apple Watch. That's why I'm always wearing this. It's called Just Record, and uh, it's just one button. You push it, and it's recording from your watch. It's doing the same kind of thing. The iPhone voice recorder is a better quality recording, but either way, if you've got a smartphone. Always be thinking about capturing something. Even if it's just a little idea and you don't know what you're going to do with it, just capture it and then label it and then put it on the shelf. And you'll come back to those things later. And for one, you'll see how much you've improved. But two, you'll you'll realize like so a lot of these ideas that you just weren't thinking about, they're, they're pretty cool. The other thing with recording with a smartphone is I'll record an idea a lot of times and then I'll just walk away from it. I'll go have dinner or something and I'll come back to it and I'll listen to it and go, ugh. I didn't like this part, but I did like this part. And so you, you have a different way of hearing something after you've kind of stepped away from it. So you get the advantage of having that. So I would wrap this all up by saying those are the things I would look for. Is, uh, for one, uh, hold yourself to a deadline. Finish what you've started. So put a fork in stuff. Learn how to do that. And make decisions. Um, keep it simple simple chord structure, and then have a smartphone or some kind of a recording device on you so that you can just capture this stuff in real time. If you do those things, you're going to be a much better songwriter. I didn't want to get into the technical stuff with this. Uh, If you want to know what um, software I'm using, I use Apple Logic for everything. Um, So that's the the multi-track recording software that I'm using. Uh, And I do everything through my laptop. It's not a very elaborate setup. Maybe in a future video, I'll show you around my studio here, my studio. 
All right, so hopefully that gives you some ideas for how you can be a better and more efficient songwriter.